Let me start with foreign relations, which has to do with our place in the world, and recap what we have been doing in these last two years. Our relations with our big powers, with America and China, are in good order. I've just visited both of them in recent months. In September, I had a good visit to China. They invited me, even though it was just before their 19th Party Congress, and I was happy to accept. I had good meetings with their senior leaders, including President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang. Both sides value the relationship, and I discussed with the Chinese leaders new areas of cooperation. Last month, I visited the U.S. and met Pres President Donald Trump and his key officials just before their trip to Asia. I shared with them my perspectives, including how Asian countries wanted the U.S. to stay engaged in the region. I touched base with senators and congressmen and with U.S. policy thinkers because we have a wide network in America, many friends at many levels. And I'm there. We are a small country. They are a big one. I'm there to keep Singapore a blip on their radar screen so they notice us. It's not always easy to be good friends with both the U.S. and China at the same time. But as a small nation, we have to make friends with as many countries as we can. So we have to work hard to tend our relationships with both the U.S. and China while upholding Singapore's own interests. And I think we have not done too badly. Near the home, near the home, relations with our neighbors, our immediate neighbors, are also good. I hosted a retreat with President Jokowi in September, and next month I'm hosting a retreat with Prime Minister Najib Razak. We are doing a lot with both Indonesia and Malaysia. Singapore is the largest foreign investor in both countries and also the largest number, also produce the largest number of tourists to both countries. And we have several major projects with them. With Indonesia, the Kendal Industrial Park, which is at Semarang. And we're also developing modular LNG plants, electricity plants, for Indonesia's regions, because it's a big country, they need electricity in many different places, and with a small LNG plant, you can deliver the electricity and send the natural gas there. With Malaysia, we're building the high-speed rail to KL and the rapid transit link to Johor Bahru, which we will sign the agreement for the RTL next month. But our relations with Malaysia and Indonesia will always be complex and issues will crop up from time to time. You take Pedra Branca, for example. It's an old subject. We thought the issue was settled permanently long ago because in 2008, the Interna International Court of Justice made a ruling, final, awarded Pedra Branca to Singapore. But almost a decade later, the Malaysians have gone to the ICJ again, and they're asking the court to reinterpret and revise the judgment, reopening the subject. I'm not sure what the Malaysians' motive is, but the general election is coming, and maybe that has something to do with it. And in Indonesia, although our relations are good, politicians have been talking about taking back their airspace from Singapore. Actually, this is not about Indonesia's airspace, but the FIR, the Flight Information Region, which is for managing air traffic. Singapore manages an FIR around Changi Airport. It includes some areas which are in Indonesian airspace, and Indonesia wants to take back that FIR. But who controls the FIR? It's a technical matter of making the best arrangements for air safety. But unfortunately, it has been politicized 
and made into an issue of sovereignty and national pride. And when sovereignty and national pride are engaged, that unfortunately makes the problem much harder to solve. So there will always be ups and downs in our relations with our neighbors and with other countries, big and small. Our interests will not always coincide with theirs, but our fundamental approach must not change. Singapore should take a long-term view and work towards good relations that benefit both sides. When relations are going well, we shouldn't take them for granted. More importantly, when relations are down, we must not get flustered or cower. Secondly, while we are friends with many countries, we must not and we must never inadvertently fall under foreign control or influence. No foreign country should ever influence our domestic debate and politics or divide and weaken us either openly or covertly. It happens. You read about what happens in Australia. They are worried about foreign influence. You read about what happened in the American elections last year where they are accusing the Russians of trying to influence the elections through Facebook, through Twitter, quietly, secretly. Can it happen to us? Yes, it can. But we must prevent it from happening. And Singaporeans have to understand our core interests so that when we are put to the test, we will stay united and back the government. Then we can stand our ground and defend Singapore's interests as one single cohesive country. 